standing at the north face of the World Trade Center. Uh, it appears, at least from this vantage point, that something has hit it. Something has gone into the World Trade Center. I do not have that confirmed in any way, shape, or form, but there is a gash across... Uh, I, I would want to say about 10 stories down from the top of the World Trade Center, uh, All right, Tom. sort of from, from right to left and making its way down. Yes, Jeff. Okay, we're going to interrupt you here. Uh, we've found an eyewitness who's going to talk to us about what they see. Smoke at this point is billowing from that top eighth, let's say, of the one tower. And now we've seen what it's like from the, from the air in the word pictures of Tom Kaminsky. What's it like on the ground here? We have an eyewitness who's called us who is uh, on the way to work driving to the World Trade Center. Hello, Hello, sir? Yes, what are you yes. seeing? I see a gaping hole at the top of the World Trade Center, almost to the top, not quite up there. All I, I, I wasn't looking at it as I was driving towards it. I just heard a huge explosion. It seemed like it blew out as opposed to something going into it. And I, I'm looking at it real close now. Obviously, I'm not going to get there, so I have to turn around somewhere here. How far away are you right now? I'm uh, four blocks away looking right at it. Can you see the smoke coming from that it's, hole? It's a huge hole. There are flames. There's smoke. There's smoke on the others. You know, it looks like the impact was on the northbound side or, or something blew out on the northbound side. But I see smoke coming out on the southbound and the uh, westbound side also. And it, it's the uh, northbound uh, tower that this happened in. The north tower is the one that's closer to Midtown. Yes, that's right. And where are you driving right now? Well, I'm on uh, West Street, so I'm looking right at it. I'm only two blocks away. Yeah. Uh, this is as far as I'm going to be able to go. I'm going to have to turn around somewhere. All right. Uh, thank you for time. that. 852. Again, what we're following is there is smoke coming from the World Trade Center, the top eighth of the North Tower. There's a gash apparently in the side of the building. And now, WCBS News Time 852, we have breaking news on WCBS 880, right here, right now. I believe if we can get uh, in touch with him, we have a witness who saw what happened at the World Trade Center. Uh, M. David Levin, are you with us? I am right here at the foot of the uh, World Trade Center on the north side. Uh, smoke is billowing out of the, uh, oh, I would say it's about 15 stories down from the top of the uh, uh, number two, I believe it is, uh, World Trade Center. Flames are coming out also. This apparently was... Uh, uh, a commuter plane that smashed into it with such force that uh, the windows of the pick a bagel in which I was uh, just about to buy a bagel uh, uh, smashed uh, with a big bang. Uh, everybody was very frightened and uh, it sounded like a fabulous explosion and uh, indeed there is uh, a great devastation up there. What happened uh, to the commuter plane? It looks from what we're seeing that it might have actually gone through one side of and out the other. Uh, I can't see the south side of the building, but uh, it could well have been. It, it hit with such force that uh, uh, the whole neighborhood really shook. Well, Tom Kaminsky may have a better view for us, um, David. Uh, he's in Chopper 880. What yeah, are you seeing Pat, now, Tom? Uh, I think we can sort of confirm that at least to uh, some degree. Uh, we are now looking at flames shooting out of the north side of uh, number one World Trade Center. But there are at least some windows uh, blown out and smoke billowing out of the opposite side. We have not been able to get to the south side of the building yet. We're sort of staying right here. We have a very good vantage point. So we're staying here for the time being. However, there is smoke billowing out of uh, both sides, uh, really of all four sides, it would appear, of, uh, of uh, World Trade Center Tower Number 1. And as we've been saying, this is uh, anywhere between 10 and 15 stories down from the top. Now, as you look at the World Trade Center, this is the building with the antenna on top of it. Uh, so... There is, there is quite a bit of flame now coming out of uh, the north face of that building. And only smoke. I don't see any flame coming out of the other uh, approaches. But uh, I talked to uh, our pilot, uh, Arthur Anderson, and he says he did see something go into that building. We, again, uh, do, we were at the George Washington Bridge and beginning to make our way south. Uh, I looked up and saw a fireball, but uh, Arthur uh, Anderson, my pilot, says that he certainly did see something uh, right at that building about 10 to 15 stories up. Tom, stay with us for a minute, will you? Uh, we want to talk to WCBS producer Kelly Edwards on the ground. Of course, uh, you, you can see the fire. Where are you? I'm just about 
I'm just about 15 blocks north of the World Trade Center right now on 7th Avenue. Fire trucks are screaming down 7th Avenue trying to get to this fire. It looks like the fire is about 10 blocks from the, I mean, excuse me, 10 stories from the top of the building. Flames are shooting out. P smoke is pouring out. This gash goes from one side of the building practically all the way to the other. You can see thick black smoke pouring out of the front of the building, the north side. I can also see it coming out of the west side, and it's certainly coming off the entire top of the building right now. It's completely covered with smoke. You can barely see the top of the building. You can see flames shooting out of the east side of that gash. The gash seems to be getting bigger. I can now see flames coming out of the east and the west side of the gash. It seems like the windows are breaking as the fire moves down the building. Well, we had heard earlier from one of the witnesses, M. David Levin, told us that uh, the, the ground floor windows had been shaking, Kelly. Now, everybody we were been speaking with seems to have a vantage point of one side of the World Trade Center. We can tell you that at least two sides, two facades of the building have giant holes, at least two or three stories high in them. We don't know what's become of people inside or where that plane might have ended up. We're trying to find out the latest for you. Of course, we're very little in the way of details. Emergency crews are still on their way to the scene as of this point. Stay with WCBS 880 because we are right on top of this for you with reporters on the way to the scene. Tom Kaminsky is overhead giving us the bird's eye view and in fact was the first to uh, tell us about it and see it. Tom's been hovering around. Let's go to him right now up in Chopper 880. Tom. All right, uh, Jeff, uh, back here with you. And we're uh, trying to gather some information as to what type of plane uh, this might have been into this uh, into this area. I can tell you, as as we are looking here at the north uh, side of the north face of Tower Number One, uh, the gash that is in the building runs from about 10 stories up to about 15 stories, going from right to left, uh, going uh, sloping to the left diagonally. Uh, smoke is pouring uh, out of that face, and now we have quite a bit of smoke and flame pouring out out of the eastern side of tower uh, number one and uh, that also about 10 to 15 stories up so it is our guess uh, that what uh, whenever went into tower number one uh, went into it and uh, stayed there we have not seen any evidence of any other fire on the south side of the world trade center tower number two at least from our vantage point appears to be unaffected this appears to be entirely in tower number one uh, but the impact point is almost certainly uh, on the north side of Tower Number 1, about 15 stories up. Uh, we're just getting a look at the street. Uh, the uh, traffic on West Street at this point is just beginning to come to a stop. That hasn't really happened yet. Uh, we are seeing some police and emergency crews beginning to make their way uh, down West Street. Certainly, uh, this area is going to be uh, not the place to be. Uh, I would want to say from about uh, the area of Canal Street on down, at the very least, you really need to try and avoid uh, driving in these uh, in this area and uh, at this point uh, Jeff that is that is all we have we are still uh, looking at smoke billowing okay. out of tower number one all right Tom Kaminsky will come back to us and we have reporters Peter Haskell Mary Gay Taylor on the way to the scene our producer Kelly Edwards on the ground not far has has given us a good birds uh, a good uh, view from the ground and Tom Kaminsky will continue to give us a bird's eye view and that's why you want to stay with us on WCBS 880 we've got you covered WCBS CBS News Time 859. Let's give you a recap of what's transpired. We first saw this huge plume of smoke wafting up from the World Trade Center about, I'd say, 12 minutes ago, about quarter of 10 minutes to 9 o'clock. After that thick Black smoke began billowing from gashes in at least two sides of the building. Windows have been shattering. Some people, eyewitnesses we've spoke to on the air here at WCBSA in those top 10 or 15 floors of the North Tower, there was such an explosion that it made windows shake and break on the ground 100 stories below. Joining us now on the line is uh, um, an eyewitness who is in the Empire State Building. Bob Bradley, what do you see? I, uh, I saw this plane. It didn't look like it was out of control at all. It was a... Uh a medium-sized body plane with uh, engines on both sides just fly right into the building. I thought at first it was a shadow uh, that was going to you know, swoop over top of the building like we've seen in the past just sitting here in our office, but this plane headed directly for the building. And no, it didn't look like there was any trouble at all with the plane. It didn't swerve at all. It just landed directly in the building. It was like almost like a gray black color in nature on the plane. It, and it seemed, it seemed as though it, it, it just flew right into the building without... Right, yeah, like he, was, like he wanted to fly into the building. He wasn't trying to avoid the building? No. This guy swoops directly into the building. 
All right, that's what it looked like from one vantage point. And that's from the Empire State Building. Thank you I'm very a, much. You got it. Okay, well, also to speak with us now, people are checking in from all over from the Village Penthouse. I'm not sure exactly where that is, but we'll find out. Carl Tendler is joining us. Where Where are you located? Um, I'm near Washington Square Park. I, I live in a penthouse which faces directly the two World Trade Center building. Were you looking outside when this happened? I heard noise overhead. And uh, I got up to see what it was. It was a low-flying aircraft. It was about 150, 200 feet off my penthouse. He was flying straight ahead, and he, he pulled up a little bit and uh, uh, went into the just hip of the side of the World Trade Center. There was a huge flash. Uh, the aircraft looked like he was a uh, DC-3. Uh, he was aluminum, uh, no markings, aluminum. And he just flew right into the building. I still can't believe it. All right. Thank you very much. That's what you saw from north, right? That is I'm north. north of the Trade Center. In Washington yes. Square. All, All right. right. So we're hearing a couple of witnesses who said they saw a plane fly right into the building. Tom Kaminsky in Chopper 880 back with us again. And uh, we are getting a look at the south side of the building. And certainly there is now that we can see severe damage uh, even to the south side of this building, which is now beginning to make me question uh, which uh, angle uh, this aircraft approached from. Uh, the uh, Most of the smoke is billowing up now to the south side of Tower. Tower number one, so it's a little bit difficult to uh, to determine exactly uh, the impact point. I can tell you that whatever internal sprinkler system there is at the World Trade Center has certainly been activated because the smoke that we can see at the impact point uh, is still very dark, but the smoke toward the top, the top 10 to 15 floors of tower number one, that smoke is now white, and a lot of windows have been blown out on all four sides from uh, about 15 to 20 stories up on tower number one. But but certainly that smoke is now uh, white in, uh, in nature. So uh, there are fire crews just screaming into this area from every conceivable direction. We're looking at crews uh, flying down West Street currently into this area. We've uh, noticed uh, some uh, coming across Canal Street. Uh, and uh, just this entire area of lower Manhattan is absolutely going to need to be avoided. For how long, there is absolutely no way to tell. Now, we've gotten a look at least three sides of Tower Number 1, and that is the only building... It's exploding effect. right now, Tommy. We're seeing another... That was Another Apparently plane. that was another plane. We have a witness who we just spoke to a moment ago. We're hearing from Carl Tendler, who was at the Village Apartments in Washington Square. We're trying to bring him on the air. All right, that Carl? was a second plane uh, that just blew? Number one. It's been another one, Carl. Yes, he hit in building number one. The other building. Yes, he flew right into it. You describe exactly what you just saw, Yes, please. I saw this jet coming towards uh, the building. He was low. Uh, he was about halfway up. And he flew into, uh, it looked like the south side, south uh, east corner of, of the building. So uh, building number two is now burning. So uh, that's now either one plane or, the, or two planes flying into each building. one aircraft that just hit the south corner. It looked like a twin engine jet. That is about what was described, what you described earlier, wasn't it? You who told us. No, the, the first one was a DC-3 that hit the first building. Okay, we're seeing, like, it, it looks like some kind of sick confetti parade. There is debris flying out of that south tower. We saw a burst of flames a moment ago just before that we talked to That was the aircraft that just hit building number one. Okay, we're going right, to go back to Tom you, Kaminsky Both and Chopper 880. It's been, been a... Okay, it's Both been about buildings. 20 minutes since the first explosion, the first plane we flew have, into the North Tower. Uh, Jeff, Tom. We have, we have gone to the north side of the World Trade Center, uh, so we were shielded from the, uh, from that. Uh, but just uh, moments prior to that, we were uh, getting a look at Tower Number 1. That was unaffected. But as we were looking back, we did see a second explosion of some type in Tower Number 1. So both of the towers of the World Trade Center are now affected. This has... Uh, this second explosion has just happened. We're still looking at debris still raining down. And now uh, from tower number two, uh, my, uh, my uh, correction there, uh, the second explosion just happened at tower number two. This is in the general area of uh, where the first one was, but a bit farther down. I want to say maybe about uh, 20 to possibly 25 stories down. And this would be on the northeast corner from what we can see uh, of tower number one. So we now have both of the towers of the World Trade Center uh, at this point 
uh, in flames. And you know there are some transmitters, of course, on top of one of those buildings, and that is affecting some of our uh, broadcast friends yeah, right now. Yeah, some of the TV stations are off the air at this point, so we will try to describe what we have for you. Tom Kaminsky, just have to ask, do you have fuel enough to hang with this for a while? Uh, we are actually going to refuel and be back with you. In fact, All our right. plan is that we're going to do that right now so we can come back with you. Again, All right, thanks. Recap Tom Kaminsky, we've... it's 9.05 on WCBS New York, and we are covering for you uh, a, a couple of explosions. Planes have crashed into each of the towers of the World Trade Center just within the last few minutes. I'll tell you what happened, what we saw. We were watching a television monitor. Uh, we were watching the smoke, the thick black smoke coming from the gaping holes in the North Tower. Tom Kaminsky was on the air a few moments ago live, and suddenly the TVs went blank for a moment. They came back on with the pictures from the World Trade Center, and there was a second explosion into the other tower. A little bit lower, let's guess, 20 stories below uh, the explosion point on the first tower, and again, people have seen uh, two planes, one hitting each tower 20 minutes apart. And I think another, uh, we, we've had a lot of eyewitnesses calling us in who were able to see what happened. In fact, one of our listeners who called us at two different times who said he saw each building get hit separately by two separate planes. Apparently the first plane was a DC-3. The second plane is being described as a twin engine plane that went into the second building just a few minutes later. People have been telling us that they uh, don't believe that the uh, plane had been trying to avoid the building. It almost looked as though it had intended to fly right into it. All right, Tom Kaminsky still with us. He has to refuel, but let's go up to uh, Chopper 880. Yes, what's happening now, Jeff, is that we've had... Uh We've had uh, all uh, aircraft operations in and around this area of lower Manhattan suspended entirely. Uh, LaGuardia Airport has said uh, there are two confirmed aircraft into the World Trade Center, and they want no one at all in this area. They are, uh, in effect, uh, if, if you can possibly picture this, cordoning off the entire area uh, around the uh, World Trade Center and around Manhattan from at least Midtown on south. So we will be looking at this from a far distance and describing from what we could see, uh, uh, what we could see at least from the opposite side of the Hudson River. We don't know what sort of restrictions uh, will be placed upon any aircraft in addition to this, but uh, LaGuardia Airport confirming two aircraft into the World Trade Center, one into each tower, uh, so they have uh, requested that all aircraft leave the area immediately Immediately, so we are complying with that. Thank you, Tom Kaminsky. We appreciate everything you've done so far. We hope you'll be back with us shortly after catching a drink for the helicopter. One thing we have yet to discuss is the people inside yes, the World Trade the, Center. The business day had started. Plenty of people were likely in their offices when all this happened at about... Quarter of nine? The quarter of nine or so as people are coming in, in the elevators. Uh, roughly 50,000 people, as we know, work at the World Trade Center complex. More than just the two buildings, there are many that are low rises beneath. And those two towers, there are a tremendous number of people, and there are gaping holes and flames flying from some of the upper floors. We wish you could we could tell you exactly what was going on inside. We don't know if this is ominous or not. Certainly communications would be cut at a time like this. The transmitters atop the building have shut off some of the TV stations here in New York City. Uh, the question is, uh, there, with no communication from inside the building, what has happened to the people on those upper floors? We haven't heard from any witnesses inside the World Trade Center. Let's uh, take a little listen now for a moment uh, to uh, CBS 2, which Ladies is and gentlemen, back it's on the air. to fathom another accident. It's, it's indescribable as to why any of this has happened. To, to, as, we, we can't put words in the FAA's no, mouth no. or any, any flight uh, tower information, but you're seeing what we're seeing, and on a what 